Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. I am hosting our coffee chat today. And Catherine and I, we're a little spicy today. We're a little sassy, aren't we? We are sassy because actually, I don't know whether it's the energy shifts. I don't know whether it's, I think personally for me, Bryce, I've always been, everyone thinks I'm a really confident, outspoken person, but I've really, um, you know, tried to really look at my communication style and how it is constructive or not constructive and everything. But actually, like in all these things, you know, we're talking about it being a spiritual battle, a spiritual war. But actually, I'm really, really happy to be at a stage where I'm going to really give a lot more home truths. I mean, I have been in a lot of ways, but I think actually now's the time for people to stop projecting their insecurities on other people. And, um, you know, there's a big difference between empathising with what people are going through and projecting your shit on them. And I want people to really realise there is a difference. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and we, I, I want to thank you, Catherine, because I don't think our subscribers, our viewers, if you don't have a YouTube channel, which is totally understandable, I think sometimes people think that we make a shit ton of money on YouTube, and exactly. that's not the case at all. The only money I make off of YouTube is from my amazing patrons, and my, they, they are literally up until this point, they have been what has been fueling this channel. Um, my, just to give you guys an example, my car is almost at 200,000 miles and I'm not in a position to go buy a new one. And I need my car because Atlanta is a driving city. I only make money off of my patrons and my teaching outside of, outside of YouTube. YouTube does not pay the bills. And Catherine was so kind to get me set up with what I'm calling a sponsorship with this ASEA company. And I'm going to be really honest with you guys. I know Catherine and I were talking about this before we, before we started filming, I've gotten offers for tons of different products to sponsor on my channel. And I, I always research the product because because I want to stay in integrity. And this was the first time I've actually accepted it because I, I like what I hear about this product. It seems like it's really good for humanity. And I know that a lot of you guys, I want to thank like 99% of you. I want to thank you guys because you've been so supportive in the comment section. And that means the world to me. But there have been a few people who have left really abusive comments about the fact that I've taken a sponsorship. And for those people, I'm just going to block you because what people don't understand is that, or some people do, for me to film one video of my research can take sometimes up to a month's worth of research. I work, I know Catherine works, about 16 hours a day. Yep. I'm not making anything off of this, Okay. Now, like most of you guys watching, I have bills to pay. I've got to put food on the table. I've got to make sure I have gas in my car. Logically, how am I going to continue to provide content if I don't have money coming in? And the beautiful, amazing, I was telling Catherine this morning, I did a kickboxing video this morning, and halfway through the video, she had a sponsorship, a 30-second commercial for a sponsorship. And you know what my thought was? Good for her. Because as someone doing her video, I get to do her video for free that she put up. And with all of her experience in the exercise world, I benefit from that free video on YouTube. And the fact that this company that sponsored her wants to sponsor her means that she can continue to pay her bills, do all she needs to do to put free content up for me. So that's the thing about the sponsorship, guys. It's a 20-second commercial. And, it, and then you get the whole video. So... But then people like Catherine and me are able to pay our bills, able to feed our animals, able to feed our children, able able to do things so we can continue to make content. And so for people to to think that we shouldn't be taking sponsorships, I, I don't, as Tamara would say, what Santa Slay are you writing in on? Yeah, you know, absolutely. What, it would be like, say, I was telling Catherine, say you're an accountant and I were to come into your place of business, your accounting firm and tell your boss, that he shouldn't be paying you. You should just be working for free. And again, we're, I'm saying this, I think most of our subscribers totally understand this. And I'm so grateful to all the people who have lended their support and have been so excited. I That means the world to me because you guys do understand that it is an energy exchange. We're not dancing monkeys. And that's how it makes me feel when people leave comments about nasty comments about me having a sponsorship. It makes me feel like I'm a dancing monkey. Yeah, and no one should be having dancing monkeys. They should be wild in the fruit. But yeah. it's so 
important because like me, I mean, you're going to have, I don't know if you've already had one, the amazing Danielle Matthews, who is now one of my best, best friends. So some of the people on Saturday, oh, she's just such a beautiful human and so knowledgeable. And she will tell you when I first went in to see her, I asked hundreds of questions, many questions that have never been asked because I'm so passionate. I'm first and foremost, I am a holistic health coach for humans and animals. So Throughout this whole crazy, crazy time that we're all faced with, my passion and your passion is to actually share solutions for people. Now, you can't know what solutions you need if you don't understand the problems that are being thrown at you, which is why I think we try and balance to the best of our ability to sort of say, look, these are some of the issues we're being hit with. Here's some of the solutions you can do. And there was always free solutions. So I did a lovely video with Jackie White, who's just the most gorgeous lady on Ho'oponopono and happiness. There's so much free content we put up there for people that can't afford products. But like for me and you, we work really, really long days, which I choose to do, not blaming that on anyone. It's my choice. However, I then need to support myself physically, emotionally, spiritually, with extra things to allow me to do that because I've got a lot of rescue animals under my care and that is my first and foremost priority as well as my family to support but what I I'm what's more challenging to me really because I've had a lot of comments about the info so um it, it, you know turning into doing all the commercials it allows me to do this content for free and I've turned down many 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 big interviews where I could get loads of views and earn loads of YouTube absence to stick to my core values of the information I want to share. Now, I'm not being self-righteous by saying this. I am really grateful for all the content creators out there, the good, the bad, and the ugly, because they're all teaching us the lessons we need to learn. But I have to stay true to my integrity, which means that I make it absolutely sod off of YouTube because I've chosen to keep to my lane yeah. as opposed to doing the sort of big hitting drama ones that I know I could get loads and loads of views for and earn a lot of money off. Everyone is entitled to do what you own. By me saying that, I'm not criticizing the people that have chosen to go another way as well. We're all on our own journeys. And the great thing about YouTube or Rumble or BitChute is it's a choice. So anyone who's choosing to switch on and off, you're not being tied to a chair and forced to listen to it. Um, so I, I think... For me, Bryce, one of the issues that's coming up with this, and again, we are only talking to a minority, but I had a conversation. I've got a really, really dear friend, and I was having a telephone ping pong conversation with her this morning by message because we were saying it's such a fine line at the moment between being aware of what's going on in the world and then still keeping on a positive thought line so that we're not manifesting into our reality a lot of these negative things. But we do also, let's face it, need to know how we have been all brainwashed and, and what atrocities have been going on. So there's no easy answer to that. I certainly haven't got the answer. But I think keeping these conversations open, because we do need a lot of people in whatever way they can to stand up and do their bits, you know, and we're doing our bits to the best of our ability. Other people are doing other amazing stuff as well. But one of the ways that I've really decided I'm going forward is I'm very conscious now where I spend my money yeah. and where I have a choice, which I'm not pretending I haven't used Amazon at all over the last year because I have to support, say, yeah. some really good authors that I love their content. And if you're a new author, sometimes that's probably the only way you can actually get your book out to market so there's it's a balancing act there's no right or wrong in this we're all going to have different points where we put our line but i'm really supporting the companies that i know and believe in are really ethical and really doing the right thing because for me that's one of the ways that i feel i can get the world moving forward in the way i want it to yeah, and that's how I felt about the ASEA too, after speaking with you and speaking with Jay and speaking and, and you know, um, if you, I'll put the conversation I had with Jay and April down in the description box as well. It is a spiritual journey. And that's one thing that I liked about this product. And, and I did, I, I was excited to, to step aboard and, and allow this to come into my life as well, because it's a good product that's helping people and also helping me. And that that's you, it's hitting the nail on the head. These these twenty second commercials that you see on a lot of people's uh, YouTube channels that's what's affording them the ability to put content out. 
And I, again, I know that for most people, you understand this, you totally get this, you know, and if Asiya is willing to bring me on board so that I can make enough money to be able to take more time to research, that is what Asiya is affording me. Well, it's also affording me better health because I am on the products myself, but also it's giving me, it's that energy exchange. It's giving yeah. me the income so that I can work harder for my subscribers to create more content so we can have more talking points. And that's the same. Like, I don't want to be a gossip channel. I don't want to be a drama channel. I'm primarily a research channel because that's what I find interesting. I love talking about like the children's strike of 1899. That's still one of my most favorite stories, you know, and going like, holy shit, guys, look how cool our ancestors was. Let, let's let's relook at this or talking about the yoga because the yoga means so much to me or the dosha system. And you guys, I, I, you know, created a 30 day challenge and a 60 day challenge. And I was able to offer that for free for anybody who wanted it. And now I'll be able to do more going forward because of people like Asiya. Yeah, absolutely. And and the other thing is, I love the fact that that we can even have this conversation, Bryce, because what we're doing is we're challenging old belief systems. So, for example, there's a lot of negative belief systems about MLM companies. But I can go into my health. I ran my own health shop um selling products it was online and in person for every possible herb and natural product for humans and animals you can imagine one it was incredibly hard work and i had to hold hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of stock to be able to provide the quality of products that i wanted to do in the range of products but secondly if you go into a shop everything every job that every person doing is selling something it's either selling expertise or products or services every single job that someone's doing and the beauty is, is when we choose what we want to support. So for me, the, it, uh, how someone choose to deliver their product to market and the product are two completely separate things. So I started taking, so for example, the Asir or the Roots products or the LifeWays because I wanted to use them for myself and my clients and my family. And then once I was happy, then I was happy to share. But I think what's moving forward is so many people over the last few years, and, and particularly at the moment, because I don't think there's a single country watching this where they aren't feeling their own economic tightening massively, whether it's food prices, whether it's fuel prices, whether it's we know how many of our listeners have been through horrendous things over the last few years where they've stood up for their values for this and lost their jobs or a family member have. So, you know, there's amazing people across the globe that have given up an awful lot of comfort to stand up for their rights. And every single one of you, I am so proud of you because you are the people that are changing the world as we speak. And it is changing and it is changing for the the better because we can see the psychopaths at the top are panicking. They're doing the most ridiculous things in this flurry of panic because you and I, Bryce, we've talked about, talked about narcissists a lot yeah. and cults. And we've talked about this in all sorts of levels. And we can see that the worst thing you can do for a narcissist is start standing up for yourself. Yeah. And I love it's my favorite saying I've been saying all week. When does a rattlesnake snake rattle when it's scared? Mm. So the more they rattle, that shows you just how scared they are. And yeah, you're right. And we and that so many people have have taken a risk in these past few years. I mean, my and that's why I'm on YouTube. My my business shut down. Yeah. And instead of panicking, I just put myself on YouTube because I knew there was a divine plan. And now that divine, I met Catherine. I met all these people that are really close to me now. It's this whole new, I'm actually grateful that I'm not grateful that everything happened at how it happened, but I am grateful that my life had was forced to take a, a turn and change because it's opened up so many amazing opportunities. And I am able to use you know, they, the Bible does say to whom much is given, much is expected. And that's something I do believe in. And Catherine, you and I both have extensive years before youtube of studying our own um trades yeah and not for in my the way i see it my perception is not every human being is ever is going to have the opportunity to spend as much time as i've spent in india or to have the teachers that i've had and so now with that being said my courses that i run here in, in atlanta and online there is a tuition charge as there is in most with most schools but i can take some of that stuff and offer it for free to a larger audience you know and that's the thing we talk about energy exchange danger i was saying to you catherine you know we get so many people that expect us to, to teach yoga for free yeah it's not an energy exchange 
You know, I mean, we do have karma programs. A lot of shalas do have karma programs. I've, we've talked about this before. Just because the tuition is set at a certain price doesn't mean that, that if you go talk to the teacher, they can work something out with you. Um, whether you do a karma program where you help them clean the studio or do yeah. a clean or you do a payment program. There's always things that can be done. Uh, I know at AYA, we do offer discounts to people who are really struggling. We will we will help them, help them out that way. But there's always an energy exchange and people will, you know, un there's a saying and I can't remember how it goes, but it's like a little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing, right? And so there's this uh, idea that even in India, at one point, people got yoga for free. Y'all, that's not true. That's not true. Yeah. What happened, what happened was these young children would move into their teacher's house and be their servants. Exactly. And I, I think I love the energy exchange. It's something I'm really passionate about and really up for. And I love it when people ask creativity. So a lot of people have seen like Andrea, who helps me um, a lot on my, you know, she's my moderator on my channel. She helps with a lot of social and now my daughter Lois. Both of those started through the good of their heart saying, I'm really passionate about sharing the message. Can I help? They didn't ask for anything. And I was desperate at that time because I was literally working every hour and I was like dropping a lot of balls. So I said, wow, that's so kind. Thank you. But now we do a share and we yeah. share the energy and we share the things. But so when these people step forward and say, and we've done it to lots of people, things like this, and this is what I'm loving. And, and if you look, anyone who's part of Bryce and the rest of our 60 day challenge and is on that um, that group, that signal group, the level of skills in that group is phenomenal. Every single person in that group has got so much to share and most importantly is sharing and supporting. And we see it a lot. I mean, you and I, I do genuinely think that we've probably got the best listeners on YouTube. Oh, what hands down the best, hands down. Honestly, the level of not only knowledge that these people have got and i'm not talking about i don't care about people's degrees i think people's degrees are important like i'm so grateful for the dr christian northrops and the dr robert o young's of this world i am so grateful and that's one route and i'm not going to dismiss them you know i've always said these people we need these people that have been there seen that know how it works and i'm also grateful for the other people that have got life's experience and what we're seeing uh, it's like you always say, you know, the darkness can't create. And what I loving is the fact that, yes, we are all talking now on YouTube and we can sit there and we can focus on the problems and the censorship, which is absolutely real. However, we can also see how much good is being spread. And I tell you what, Bres and I read all the comments, not necessarily straight away, but as soon as we can get round to them. And when I see people stepping in and helping and supporting others, it gives me the biggest biggest feeling of love because i think this is what we're doing we're taking a tool and we're using it how god intended it to be using and yet for the good and to support others and that little kind word that you say can make the complete difference and turn someone's day around it, it no one should undervalue just how much it's like my friend susie you know leaving me a voice message this morning don't underestimate how important those touches are because you can turn someone's day around for with it there's a saying i love that goes always be kind because you don't know what a person is battling you yeah. don't know what somebody is going through and and I I do Kat, and that makes me feel so great too when I see so many awesome comments in the comment section as the creator as the person who's responsible for the challenge or for the challenge for the channel both for both of them but for the channel you know when I see so many people being so appreciative to each other being kind to each other that is a that makes me feel incredible yeah that that they took the time to leave those comments and for the ones who take the time to leave nasty comments i want to be I, I sometimes i feel sorry for those people like oh wow that just shows the hate in your heart that you're really yeah. not at that place to really appreciate what what's being spoken about um and for me at this point i mean i know we, we kind of talked about this before we started filming I'm just to the point at this at this point, Catherine, where, you know, I know my value as a human being. I know what I'm good at. I know that I have a purpose and any abusive comments. I just block the person now at this point. It's just going to be it's just blocking them. Any person that that is abusive about the fact that we have a sponsorship. 
I'm just going to block the person because that's not something that I need to engage in. And that's not something that my subscribers who are awesome. And you're right. I, I really want to reiterate that because I do believe that we have the best community on the internet. And I really I, do. I'm just completely blown away by the wisdom there. You know, it's really restored my faith in humanity yeah. more than anything because the wisdom that comes across uh, from these people, I learned so much. And where people, like I had a few this morning, um, that I, I, you know, sometimes I know there's different schools of thought, and quite honestly, it depends what time I've got and what mood I'm in and what the comment is. But if someone's watching a whole hour and something video, and if you're what it's like that age old saying is, are you listening to respond or are you listening to understand? This is what I say. So if all you've got out of an hour long video is to pick out who might have said something, does so and so agree with so and so's opinion? If that's all you've got, then actually the kindest thing I think I can do is either respond and point that out to you or block you because that either might make you think because now if you're looking for a video just to pick holes just to find something that you can disagree with then that's the level of consciousness you're going to stay at there's not as we've said loads of times there's not a single person that I get on my channel that I agree with everything exactly. and it, if I did, I wouldn't do this job because my channel and my strap line is expanding consciousness through curiosity. There's no point doing it if I'm not learning and evolving as a person. And I really hope I am. And the trouble is, it's like evolving out loud. And you can see all you, I can see how these reality TV ones, the ones that aren't scripted, because, you know, all your mistakes are very public. And sometimes, you know, I'm not great at how I put things across. And I hope I'm learning um, to express myself in a different way as I go through this journey. But I think, you know, looking at ourselves, I'm not saying we're not all going to have those certain moments. Don't get me wrong. I'm 100% putting my hand out. Sometimes I'll listen or watch something and it will trigger me. But the difference is, is I realize the trigger's got nothing to do with the person. So right. would I leave a negative response? No. Might I switch the video off? Absolutely. If I can feel that I'm plummeting vibration-wise and I don't feel I'm going to get something, but I will ask myself the question, am I triggered and do I need to learn from this or is this actually a waste of my time continuing? Yeah. And that's the, I, I, there have been times where, well, you know, I've, I've, I've said it a couple of times, like if people are triggered by the content or triggered by the ads, I kind of want to be like, that's a you problem, not a me problem. Like that's, that's your trigger. That's not mine. It's not Catherine's. It's not anybody else in the comment sections. It's yours. And if that's, and that's one thing I think we've spoken a lot, your triggers are your golden lottery tickets. Th those are the things you embrace for you to go, Oh, why is this bothering me? Why does it bother me that that this guest came on this person's channel and they're having a conversation? I watched yesterday, I watched one of a, a channel I watch a lot and they they talk a lot. It's Andrew Gold's channel and he talks oh, a yeah, lot. I've watched that as well, yeah. He's he he cracks me up. I know we have different beliefs on a lot of stuff, but he cracks me up and he does a lot on Scientology and he brought a Scientologist on. I know. And I thought, how beautiful is that? And he even said at the beginning, be respectful, guys. Like, we're going to, yeah. he said, you know, I'm trying to close Scientology down. Now let's talk about this. And I thought, how mature, how mature. Here's somebody that's not in our community who has very different beliefs than we do, but he's handling it more maturely than some people in our, like, we can learn from each other. Didn't you think? I didn't listen to all of it, but I was doing the animals late at night. And so I was listening to that because I was intrigued to see how it went. And what I found is the guest, I can't even remember their name, but I was so impressed with how the guest didn't take offense at all. And was just because what I love is that we are all, we've all got our belief systems. I've got some really strong belief systems. I was having this conversation with some friends the other day. So when I listen to your content, this is how I first got into you with all the missing books of the Bible and everything, because I have no attachment at all to the Bible being true. I wasn't brought up in a religious setting. I'm very connected to the earth, to mother earth, to spirit, to some sort of connection, but I'm not attached to the Bible being right or wrong. So I could listen to all that stuff and there was zero triggers in me because I wasn't attached to it. But I've got other friends that would listen to that who've been brought up in a very religious situation. It's a big trigger. However, if you start talking to me and start trying to, if I'm listening to someone explaining how 
a dressage horse or a, or a race horse and how using bits and whips and things like that is right, that is a massive trigger to me. Whilst to other people, it's not a trigger at all because their beliefs say it's completely. So it's, a, it's not the subject matter that's the trigger. It's me as a person. And what I find fascinating, and I'm so grateful for seeing a lot of my triggers, are... Um, it's where I need to learn. So I've learned. So I, you can learn so openly and so much when you're not holding on to those beliefs that are still triggering you so much. And yeah. what I've realized is where I'm being triggered so much, it's blocking me learning and keeping yeah. an open mind. And so therefore, that's where I can do my ho'oponopono and whatever other clearing techniques I might want to do to actually clear that doesn't mean I'm going to change my mind. I think that's the difference. But it means I can listen with an open mind, because if not, how are we ever going to learn? How are we ever, ever going to learn? And I think one more thing I'd really want to do your opinion on, Bryce, is I've been thinking a lot. I was on my dog walk this morning. I was really thinking, I was thinking, okay, because I was speaking to a lovely client, actually, who wanted some masseur for her family members who've had multiple this or that. And I was like, okay, this is really challenging because there's a lot of people that have still got this cognitive dissonance because they're not able to even think I could regret it or let that in and if you don't it's like any sort of addiction you can't accept help unless you would accept you've got an addiction so this bit of our human personality that blocks us from accepting help will be our downfall as a species if we're not careful yeah oh, absolutely absolutely it's it's the most beautiful I mean that's I think I've told the story before when my nephew my, my sister's oldest child was learning how to speak as a toddler and anybody who has toddlers know they get frustrated because they don't have the vocabulary to ask for help. And my brother-in-law's sister gave my sister a really good clue. She said, just teach Charlie how to say help, please. And so mm -hmm. even if he had like, you know, say that a toy that was like broken and he couldn't get, or he couldn't get it to work instead of getting frustrated because he, you know, he would just go to his mom or me or his dad and just say, help, please. And it caused, it, it made his toddlerhood so much calmer because then there was an understanding that he needed help instead of just yeah. a frustration. And, and I think that as adults, we, why th this life is one big experiment. That's all it is. You're, you're a walking experiment for yourself. Spiritually, you're, the soul is here to know itself. And so everything you do is an experiment so why are you afraid to stumble and ask for help when you need help? Why are you afraid? You know, well, and, and I know fear comes from, it comes from that, that vulnerability because, you know, we have the Westboro Baptist Church here in America, which if you guys don't know what that is, look it up. I can't say what they do because this video, will get, it's awful. It's terrible. And, but they're very aggressive with their beliefs. Mm. And what I've learned is when people are that aggressive with their belief system, whatever it is, it's because they're afraid they're wrong. Absolutely. Be right. And so that's when they get closed minded is because it's coming from a fear of being wrong. Yeah. And if we understood that really, then, then everywhere we're, 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 we all have blinders on at some point, we all are closed minded to some things. And if we can only see that, that there's a fear, we might be wrong. And then it's kind of comical. We kind of laugh at ourselves and be like, well, who cares if I'm wrong? I'll course correct. You know, and, and uh, people who are really comfortable with what they believe in can handle their beliefs being challenged. I love that. And I think it's such an important point for people to take on board because the thing is, we, we know and everyone watching this knows that, um, as Bruce Lipton says, if you want to know where your blockages are, if you want to know where your brainwashed beliefs that have been put into your subconscious mind by other people who are at conflict with your core beliefs then look at your world because our world that we are living individually and every single person watching this will have different challenges going on and I think it's very unlikely that any of us haven't got any challenges that we're working with at the moment we've all got different ones and they'll appear to us at different times and we'll have different challenges to learn from so if we're not sure what 
but core beliefs have been implanted into our subconscious minds look at the areas of your life that you're being triggered by look at the areas of the life you're not happy with and that will tell you because you're only triggered where your subconscious belief is at conflict with your real soul belief or your soul purpose you saying that triggered triggered me actually in a good way because I took a snapshot of this yesterday because this and and it must be serendipitous you said that this comes from a psychology uh, YouTube and they were putting things up and I snapped this because I thought this was brilliant. Decisions are made both on conscious and subconscious levels. When the two decisions don't agree with each other, we experience anxiety. Yeah, and that is. So we don't know, none of us know where our blind spots are. We need really good friends. And this is why I so appreciate friends like you and, you know, a couple of the others I've mentioned, you know, my friend Susie. I've got some really good friends where I can have these conversations and we can give really honest, you know, have these honest conversations without the other person taking offense because we know how much we love each other and we genuinely want to learn. And I want my friends to point out my blind spots because I'm not going to see them. That's why they're my blind spots. And if you haven't got good friends that are prepared to do that for you, they're not really good friends because we live in this namby-pamby world where, where we've been brought up to think that we have to agree with everyone for the same thing. But that's the form of narcissistic abuse. If you've really got someone's best interest at heart, you know, I'm a parent of two and four-legged children. I have to make difficult decisions every day for those that I'm parenting for not my children anymore because they're too old <laughs> but you know what I mean and and will I get some of those decisions right yes and will I get some of those decisions wrong and I can learn from those and do better next time but if you haven't got someone that's going to point out if if none of us if no one had been talking out if you didn't have these brave medical professionals normal people nurses you know all sorts of works of lives if we all weren't talking about about please now some of us couldn't explain the science behind it because none of us knew initially what was really in it but we still knew in our core that okay. this is wrong we trusted our intuition we trusted our gut and then we got ridiculed because when the scientists said well show me prove it to me we couldn't well now unfortunately the proof is coming out and um, but now we're saying look it's not too late to ask for help there's so many solutions out there but you can't get the solution you're not even going to be open to it if you don't say help please Help, oh, please. Yeah, abs absolutely. I'm because I have a friend who's doing Reiki with people who realized after the fact what they had done. Yeah, there's help and that vulnerability, that place where you say, "Oh, I fucked up." Yeah, that is such a powerful thing. Just to say, I fucked up. Like that's a powerful place to be because just acknowledge in whatever it is, whether it's this thing, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a business, whether it's um, maybe if, if you are one of the people watching this that's pissy about our us having sponsorship, maybe something you go, oh shit, I'm not, yeah, they're right. Maybe being in that place, that's when change can happen. But when yeah. you hold on, that's the cognitive dissonance, right? When you hold on to the what you originally thought because you don't want to be wrong, that's when you get into even more trouble. And that's when, listen, that's when things, so help please. And I respect and when there are people who can say, I messed up. I'm sorry. Can we fix this? I have so much respect for people who do oh, that. Completely. Like on personal relationships. I don't, again, I don't think there's anyone watching this, Bryce, that isn't going to have had personal relationships that have gone very sour over the last few years. And for people that, you know, I was speaking to Matt Letizia, amazing people in the UK know him, Lagarde, brilliant footballer, but he's really spoken up. But he's actually managed to hold on to a lot of his um, uh, personal relationships, although his public relationships, he's gone through a difficult time because he's got a wonderful way of communicating, which I have, where he can do it in quite a non-offensive way, um, but still stick to his ground. And we've all got our strengths and weaknesses in that. But I think it's really beautiful when you do, whether it's a friendship, um, that you reach out and sort of say, look, tell me, recently I've reconnected with someone. Um, and I was like, right, tell me, you know, what's the issue? Because if I don't know what the issue is, and this person had spent the last year doing a lot of work, and she said, well, this is what I thought the trigger was with you, but I actually have been doing a lot of work, and I completely realised it was nothing to do with you. 
it was me it was my trigger so even though i'm telling you but i've learned a lot from that because uh, this is what we've got to do is lovingly help each other along this road none of us would have learned to walk we wouldn't have learned to drive we wouldn't have learned to do any of these things if you're a professional sports person if you're good at business whatever your aspect is if it's learning children you know how many of us mums we don't know everything we're learning it as we go along and we're very grateful for the help we get and some of the advice we consciously choose to ignore and some we take on board but asking for help doesn't mean you've got to accept that help it's just opening up another choice for you yeah, absolutely. And I want to, I, I'm, and even with that being said, talking about famous, we don't obviously, we're not, soccer is not that big in the United States. So we don't, we don't know many yeah. soccer players over here. But even thinking about that, like in just the part, I've told you off camera, Catherine, at this point in my life, I don't give a shit who voted for who in the last competition. No. Because there are so many people who voted for Mr. B who are so aware spiritually and so grounded in other areas of their life where I'm not seeing that in, in our community. So it, human beings are so complicated and so deep and there's so many different perspectives of each. I love Marnie Alton. I will support yeah. Marnie Alton till the day I die because her she's genius. Her bar classes have helped me. She has helped me far more than she knows, which is things she says and the way she works the body. But she's a huge Democrat. Mm. I don't give a shit anymore. I like her because I don't see that. That's the thing I think where we've gotten to. And that's cult behavior, guys. That is cult yeah. behavior. Us versus them. Cult behavior. 101. Human I haven't got Kelly's book here, but you you did your beautiful interview with Kelly Thiel, and she's coming on my channel in a few weeks. And I read her book, Unapologetically Glorious. I said this on one of my other shows. I cried my eyes out throughout that book because there were so many realizations and so many, oh my God, me too. <laughs> Not that type of me too. You know, uh, it's absolutely brilliant for anyone wanting to honestly go there get that book i'll put the link below because yeah. it's just brilliant oh no it's your channel you'll put the link below. Put and listen um, and i will say kelly I, I she'll probably watch this she has become a good friend of mine and i and that was one of the most brilliant surprises that happened i reached out to her because i heard her story and i was interested i want to bring her on and we've become really good friends and i'm so excited I, she's excited about coming on your channel and i was like come into this world of weirdo women like <laughs> yeah. but she's so wise and her experience <laughs> so wise and so it's such a beautiful little book. i mean i was literally i should have done a vlog when i was reading it because i was streaming because it was one after another after another after another bit of like amazing realizations for me and it's so beautifully written and i don't it's even if you're not interested in cult behavior at all get that book folks because it will really make you realize that it's okay to go you know it's not only okay it's absolutely essential look i've got some of my new sage book my gardener's book. I've got this amazing little gardener that's helping me out. i know it's off topic but he was cutting down the sage i was like don't throw any sage away <laughs> oh, my baby um but yeah i i just think it's an absolutely brilliant and these people this is a, a brilliant brilliant example of you know you got me to watch the documentary series seduce which kelly feels in and so is catherine otzenberg and her daughter and and I, these people are so brave because when you've got oh, the guts to stand up and say yeah i did and this is what i've learned from it and actually by me sharing what i've learned for it for me when i read that book all the stuff that you and i've been talking about and a lot of the stuff we've experienced off screen over the past few years it just all clicked into place i was like yeah 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 tick 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 you know so um these people are amazing and we're very grateful for them i will and i will re reiterate again guys and i'll put kelly's interview in my description box that i did with her too but if you just google her on youtube she's done a ton of interviews she's done a lot i actually listened to she's done two with andrew gold and one of the andrew gold interviews she actually and i can't remember the context of why this came up but she talked to she was talking about how coming out and telling her story was really embarrassing like it's embarrassing to admit that you got duped and, and ended up in a cult and when i speak to her offline and when i watch her i don't i see nothing but respect for the Absolutely. fact that for all of them, for her, for Sarah Edmondson, for Mark Vicente, for Bonnie Peace, for all the ones, the Oxenbergs that actually stood up and said, 
yeah, this cult leader duped me. I thought I was in a self-help organization and look what happened. And I'm putting, I'm going to use myself as an example. So this doesn't happen to other people. These are what, these are the signs. And I've spent years and years of my life in corporate life in various different um, jobs. And, uh, you know, the NLP side of things was huge. These self-help things, when you look at how people got into that, it was completely understandable because it's yeah. no different to half the courses loads of us have done. What it did is then you realize the manipulation behind it, but we're all manipulated. I, I'm still being manipulated. You know, we're we're finding out things in relationships that have really surprised me and the the good thing is is when you're surprised by these th people things guys remember that's because you're a nice person yeah. we're, we're surprised because we are not the psychopaths and there's nothing wrong with being a lovely person that chooses to see the best in people that's a gift that none of us ever want to lose because for me I am way more open to forgiveness at all levels than I was three years ago, Bryce, because if you can't allow people to genuinely repent, what does that say about where we are? You know, where does that line, they explain it beautifully, where is the line between being abused and being an abuser? How yeah. Without going you bring Kelly, she she talks brilliantly about that, about watching the, the. But that's true. Like, yeah, we all we all fuck up, we all do bad things, and, and where is the need for forgiveness? And that's even with the next team situation. Kelly talks about that. Like Keith Raniere, the main guy, the judge put an extra hundred years on his sentence because he was like, "This is the one person I can say is the psychopath. Everybody mm -hmm. else involved." just got manipulated and that's and, and that and you're right because the darkness can't create anything we all get into these whether it's a self-help organization or a truth or movement or a disclosure movement and tell me we all get into it because we we want to do right we want to course correct we want to to, to protect humanity and because of that you know psychopaths narcissists they need the empathetic person they need the person that they can easily and i might, might have mark vicente who said if you really look at the dynamic with these situations whether it's a, a youtube content creator that's a charismatic leader that's a like cult leader narcissist or someone like keith raniere or an l ron hubbard or you know a david koresh you name it um they need people who have a consciousness because that's what they can manipulate they can't manipulate Absolutely. another psychopath they can't manipulate another narcissist narcissist they can only manipulate people who feel things and yeah. that's the beauty that that's the beauty of like kelly's story and all these people's stories when they come out it's because i mean my boyfriend says says to me all the time like when we were watching the because i was watching the nexium stuff repeatedly to prepare for kelly's interview and he was and i was he was like oh my god you totally would have done this the only reason oh, yeah, why I, I mean my friend um kelly rivers who we started our YouTube journeys um, together sort of three years ago because we met on a retreat from someone who's, who's nowhere near that level. And um, I'm laughing because I'm being careful what we say there, but there was so much manipulation and we called them out and we got a lot of stick for calling them out. But once we started to call them out a bit, you wouldn't believe, and we weren't the starting point, another woman was because she'd been in a relationship with him. You wouldn't believe what started to come out. But as soon as I went on the retreat and saw them in person, but that doesn't mean that that person didn't have some and doesn't have some absolute gems of wisdom. Yeah, because well, that's do. Right. and you and I have talked about this about as I keep repeating, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater because it's very rarely black or white thinking, yeah. and a lot of people do this manipulation because they're in a hurt place themselves. And some people, yes, you've got the Kefaneries, which are horrendous, but you've also got a lot of people that are behaving in a similar way but aren't necessarily aware of it. Well, that's like the Nancy Salzman's, you know, and Kelly can talk more about that because, of course, Catherine and I are only seeing these people through document docu documentaries. Kelly actually knows these people. Um, you know, Nancy Salzman, who was the second in command of Nexium, she's like got like a four year sentence. But she I think she was Keith's biggest victim. And unfortunately, she became the abu one of the abusers. But she, you know, the NLP stuff, the stuff they did in these courses are general gen gen they're, they're genuine things that absolutely that, and they got manipulated so if we look at that in our own community we can see that better with how some of these truthers are using genuine tactics but manipulating people to pull them off course so and and that is that's a you know what i will say though because 
I think most of us do come into this very innocently, wanting to do good, thinking all people are good. That's a really hard lesson to learn, but it's a very necessary lesson to learn. And, and that's how these atrocities have been going on in the wider environment. There's always, you know, we are just all fractals of the bigger picture. Yeah. And one of the things that I think is is really important for people to realise is that, you know, with this person, with this coach I was talking about, they've got some absolute gems of brilliant advice. And I don't think they're a bad person. I just think they're a, a broken person at that stage. So, you know, again, there's no guilt or malice or things in this because – the whole point is we're learning we're all learning and but you've got to be aware to say to start recognizing it and sometimes you go you need to go through the lesson to recognize it and there was another point I was going to make that was really important I can't remember but you know you you've got to keep in that open inquiring mind and realizing that any form the thing is we've all talked about the brainwashing that's gone on the mind control but any form of personal development is mind control any form of psychedelics is mind control as you and i have said all the time it's never normally the tool itself it's the person that's controlling their twins. So you could go on an ayahuasca journey and have the most amazing experience, but you could also go on an ayahuasca journey. And I know plenty of people have that have been run by complete charlatans that oh. don't know what they're doing and having an absolutely terrible, very damaging experience. So I think when we realize that searching to be a better person, whatever that means for you, searching to develop yourself is not a bad thing the fact that some people manipulate that shouldn't put you off for being on your journey of self-discovery was about there, there's an ayahuasca cult here in atlanta with a really bad leader um and i won't say obviously on the internet but uh but um you know that's very you have to be very careful if you just discernment when you're picking because it's not the tool it's the person using it exactly. and, that's, and you know back to circle back where how this conversation started one thing i love to say is we see the world as we are not as it actually is Oh, so true. And so regardless of whether it's being pissed because someone has a sponsorship on YouTube or if it's some person you're, you are, you know, feeling like you have to walk on eggshells around, it's how you are perceiving it. And so that, therefore, if you are in a, like an abusive relationship with like a Keith Raniere, or if you're getting manipulated by someone on YouTube, you know, you hold the power to walk away. And what is it within you that makes you feel like you can't walk away? Or what is it within you that makes you feel like you have to be nasty about someone else getting some support? Like, it's all, it's how you, it's you. It all comes down to you. Everything always comes back to you because you can walk away. You can walk away from these abuse. It's, it's hard, but you can do it. You know, you um, can. And it is hard. We've had many discussions off camera where we've both gone through different stages of our personal life, how hard it is to break it, but you have to go through those pain. Bryce, Jamie, Soleil, and I um, last year did a series um, that I think is on my channel um, on the fifth agreement by Don uh, Miguel Ruiz. And it's the sequel to the four agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz is absolute some nuggets on there in terms of reading, seeing the world, how we all see the world through our movies, through our lens. And if, if you need a reminder about that, go and have a look. Um, Bryce, I'll send you the link to the playlist. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, because it's got some beautiful wisdom in there. And the main thing is, is don't ever be embarrassed about being fooled. Every single one of us is. We should do a round table with Jamie and Kelly, like these big names and yes. just like sharing okay, Jamie, of course, an Olympiad. I miss her so much. I need to call her and catch up with her. And then Kelly, who's gone through, who became a big public figure because of her experiences. We should do round tables. Let us know, guys, down in the description or the comment section, like, um, you know, we if you guys would want to do that, do a big round, round table with these people who have had really big lives that have had. I the think those two would get on so brilliantly because they're both yeah. so amazing. And I think, you know, this is the thing. There's no shame about being fooled. No. But there is a shame. <laughs> there is if you keep getting fooled. Yeah. If you know, if intuition wise, you know, and then you keep it offering yourself up to this sacrificial altar, then, you know, you've got to look at yourself. And I'm going to say this just in closing and saying there's no shame to being fooled. For our fellow colleagues and the truth peers and the truth of the world, 
if you're no, if you are aware now that you're filming with someone that's bad and you're scared to say something, listen, I know, I think I can speak for Catherine and myself. If you actually made a video admitting your faults, holy shit, that would be cool. And you would get a lot of respect for that. So don't ever, don't ever think saying admitting that you fucked up is a bad thing. It's as actually a really good thing. It's so, the way we're going to heal the planet. It yeah. really is the way we're going to heal the planet when we can all be vulnerable enough. But last thing I want to say, because I know we've got to go, it's on this note, is remember each and every one of us needs to ask ourselves, in my opinion, are we the type of person that is genuinely open to people's apologies and to letting people move on and be a better version of themselves? Because we all know what it's like in our personal lives, you know, those of us who live with partners and things, you know, it can be very tempting to say, oh, but you've always done this and everything. But we have to somehow, and I'm laughing because I, I say that, we have to allow people to move on and be a new version of themselves because just like every cell of our body is regenerating all the time, so are we as spiritual people, so are we uh, in, t in the type of person and the way we show up, and that can be one of the biggest challenges. So if we all open our hearts to forgiveness, if it's genuine, I'm not talking about letting a narcissist yeah. back into your life. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're not talking about that. We're talking about if someone is genuinely looking to change and needs support or has changed then that can be a wonderful thing to look at yeah and guys on that note too i will put all again all the asia stuff will be down in the description box below i'm vlogging myself uh taking this so i can actually journal with you guys and journey with i know a lot of the people who signed up under me the last couple of days i've reach out to you guys if you ever want to share your experiences to let me know because I'm doing this with you guys I've just started this with you guys too with the product itself and I'm I'm already like feeling better I don't know if that's just because I'm excited we'll see but you know um and also I Catherine's gonna send me her telegram group she has a telegram group uh specifically for information about these products with doctors and all that kind of stuff and so you can join that as well if you want to learn more um knowledge is power knowledge protects and knowledge is infinite and i will also have a phone number in the description box directly to our friend jay from spiritually raw and so if you want to talk to him directly he's been with this company for a pretty long time he knows the company really well so if you want more information from him or want to speak to him one-on-one -on -one about the product you'll just text the number bryce info and he will get back to you um and, and talk to you personally one-on-one -on -one about the product and all that kind of stuff too so um and i really encourage everyone to do that because it's not an easy to understand product and jay is an expert at making sure you get the right product at the best possible price for you so do contact jay on that and then the other thing is 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 when you're going through the user experience and everything because neither Bryce or I like to bombard people so when you get the stuff from Bryce's link that she's got below the video if you need more information on any aspect of it reach back out to Jay or Bryce because if they don't know they'll know who to ask because we want you to have the most amazing journey but we don't want to uh, you know ever bombard people with information so please don't be shy about asking yeah. Bryce because Bryce and Jay will send that information to you and I'm still learning I'm still learning as well. And so, yeah, just send me a message and just do as my nephew did. Just say, help, please. <laughs> exactly. Help, please. And then right it's the right person. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We want you to be healthy. And that's the thing that we, Catherine and I, I think generally at the bottom of our hearts, we want everyone to be mentally healthy, physically healthy, spiritually healthy. We want everybody to have long, healthy, enjoyable, quality lives. You know, um, I know we've said it before. We're not waiting for any flip to happen to find love and joy and peace we want it now regardless of what's happening in the world and so anything we can do to help you guys um, understand that better just let us know and yeah let us know if you want us to do a killer round table i know kelly's gonna be traveling but when she gets back we can talk to jamie soleil get a, a gold medalist olympian and get kelly together and talk about these things wow what a cool round table that experiences. Was. they've got so much wisdom that they've got i mean jamie is on you know everyone's watched Shane before she's just a powerhouse woman yeah. uh, so much respect so thank you so much i love these coffee chats <laughs> i just can't wait till we're doing it in person i really feel that time's coming soon yeah we love you guys. Thank you again so much for being the absolute best community in the whole world. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.